Hey yo, Music World. My name is Adi Dash, and you're listening to Just Earworms. With me is Santa Clara University Abel Madhav Dantorti. Podcast Nation, what's poppin'? What's poppin', Madhav? And today, not next to him and not near us, actually, is uh, Manish Malampati. He is uh, not joining us for this podcast. Uh, I think he it's his off day at Cincinnati, so he's probably exploring the city, exploring the art that Ohio has to offer. So we won't be seeing Manish today. But don't worry, it's just Madhav and I, and we're going to hopefully uh, hopefully navigate this ship on our latest podcast. Uh, and our topic for today's podcast is actually a really special topic, because this is the first time we have really ventured into music from this particular group. And the album is Abbey Road uh, by The Beatles, 1969 rock album a lot of people know it for its classic album cover with um with the beatles walking on the sidewalk and i know a lot of people have tried to recreate it with the steps and everything and with how coordinated it looks so yeah let's get it started this is our i guess this is our first rock album so we i know in the past someone suggested that we do something related to rock so hopefully this fulfills their wish and also uh, makes them happy because that's what we're here for just presenting good music and I, I know a lot of people uh, are gonna be like wow this is an album from 1969 so not a lot of people would know about it and this is probably a video most catered to 50 year olds right now 56 year olds but you know what I mean we are a very multi uh, multi-dimensional channel we do produce content for 60 year old men and women on YouTube so this is our this is our time to shine, and hopefully you guys have a good time. Uh, before we move on, we decided to start this program as a way to connect our love for music with something that we could share with our audience. And yeah, so let's get it started. Beatles, Abbey Road, Mother. What do you think about the album? First listens, first thoughts. What 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 went through your mind when you ha- when you came across this album? Uh, I think for someone who likes to mess around with music, play some instruments and stuff. The Beatles are like a classic to learn how to play the guitar from. Like they have sick riffs and whatnot. And I mean, I know in every podcast we talk about how people like Kanye and Jay-Z have fire production. Man, these guys are from the 60s and their production was fire. Like... I'm pretty sure technology was still like developing that back then. And I mean, they had great uh, production. Their videos were hella fire. I mean, the Beatles were on top of everything before like everything became popular. You know, they were like that group of people that were ahead of their generation, you could say. And they're definitely like that group that, kind of brought in the whole era of pop, you know, uh, great, great artists who influenced the era of pop, like the king of pop himself, Michael Jackson. They've all been influenced by the Beatles. So these guys are the ones that brought forth the music that we listen to today, even though it may seem like there's no actual similarity between the type of music that they made and what we listen to now. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, like the production, like it's it's so ironic that we keep talking about production today. Like in today's time, it's like so many like uh, so many artificial like beats. You can make them online. And I know Mazov does a really good job like producing stuff and making his own beats and everything. But now you go back to the 1960s where these I, I don't think this you it, it's fair to say that the, these are things that were not available to them. So at that point in time, producing stuff and still making it sound good enough for it to be played in 2020 is definitely really special. And I believe that I believe that this was also like this was towards not this is not the beginning of the Beatles because they started out in the 1960s. So around 1969 was when this album came out. 
So this was right during the Beatles like hype. Like this is when everyone in the world uh, were crazy over the Beatles. Like a lot of people have said before, uh, before Michael Jordan, there was a Beatles. Like that, that was the most popular thing in the world. Like everyone knew about them. Everyone had to have a copy. Everyone listened. Like a cool thing to do to know what the Beatles were. And I know every six year old old who listens to this podcast will agree with me. This Beatles, Beatles are what they grew up on. And I guess it's very cool. Like, uh, like we talk about fashion and stuff. And most of you know how like things tend to cycle back. Like nowadays, a lot of people wearing dad shoes. Like that's like a thing that happened. So the fact that the Beatles will eventually, like their music never goes away, always comes back. Just goes to show how like how good they were. So that's that's something that I definitely like enjoyed listening. Like every single time I drove this over this last week, I was listening to this album. And honestly, like it's a perfect driving album. And even other Beatles albums are like similar. I guess uh, the other albums are more pop, like Maldo was saying. This one is a little more rock. So that's how it's different. But at the same time, like the the appeal to listen to a Beatles album is still there. Uh, Maldo, what do you think is your favorite like song from the album, like from Abbey Road? Uh, this song, so the thing about this album is obviously it's really, really different from what we listen to now, now that we're in like the whole digital age, you know, to think back then people had to flip over a CD to listen to the entire album first just amazes me to see how much the world has grown. Uh, but I think of all the songs that have been that this album holds. Yeah. My favorite's probably the song Something. And okay. why is because, first off, it's really, really amazing. Like, one of, it's one of the, um, the Beatles guitarist's greatest musical achievements playing that song. And the bass and the drumming is insane. And I think as, you know, Frank Sinatra said, it's the greatest love song of the past 50 years. Oh, I did not know that. Damn. Okay. Yeah. So that the, the lyrics, the beat, it's probably one of the best Beatles songs that they've produced. And to think this was one of their last uh, LPs and yeah. they were able to put out such amazing work like that is just right. insane. So something is my choice for best song on the album. Cool. Uh, I I list, I like something. I thought here comes the sun. Like call me like a call me a basic guy, but like I think here comes the sun was definitely something that I really liked from the album. Octopus's Garden was another really good track, and I think it was Ringo Starr who was the lead vocalist on that track. So that was definitely something that I I thought that was different, and that was also really uh, it was a good track. Maxwell Silver Hammer was. Honestly, a very creative track. Like I know a lot of people uh, think all the t- all the Beatles did was love songs because most of the popular songs are love songs. But there are so many like creative different tracks that they produced or they sang on, which really like not a lot of people know. But I think uh, I think the story is that Maxwell Silver Hammer was um, was written uh, after the group took a trip to India. So that's the shout out to the motherland in 1968 when they went to India. Uh, This was definitely like the song that came out of that. Um, Also, yeah, like you said, like the fact that they have to flip over a CD or like flip over a cassette tape to just listen to a second side of the song. When nowadays, all I have to do is just hit next, next, next. And honestly, like that just goes to show like at that back then i guess music was cherished more like if that was if that's fair to say because right now with streaming services and stuff you tend to you tend to like lose the touch of music because it's always there with you so back then when you had to buy a cd or like had to like stand in line for like hours just to get a copy of music i guess you cherished it a bit more so that's definitely that some that's definitely something that stood up uh and yeah, since you mentioned something and since you said uh, Frank Sinatra believes that it was the best love song of all time, I think it's only right to play something. 
so yeah, here's something. but still it's a really good track um and going back to the album cover mother what do you think about it like it's unique and i know a lot of people know the album cover but what are your initial thoughts i think like it's definitely creative but it's also simple you know nowadays we have a lot of album covers that are really abstract like we don't really know a lot of time what's going on like for example we have the album of wanna like what is he doing what what is his what is the album cover supposed to mean right it's really abstract uh, i think it's a gemini so that's why he's Uh, like the gemini i think so maybe i don't know honestly yeah but yeah uh the more like um interesting thing is whenever you like you see certain album covers nowadays have like the album name on it or whatever uh i know back in the day like even before the beatles there was the whole thing of like putting the band name on the cover but yeah I, i feel starting from the beatles that changed a lot because uh i remember in an interview for their 50th anniversary talking about abbey road you know their album cover yeah. didn't actually have uh their name on the cover because you know they were the most famous band in the world they don't need to establish who they are again and yeah. i feel like that's something that's translated a lot today because people can easily recognize who the artist is now not even just by looking at the song title but just by listening to the voice and uh i feel like that popularity of music and people being so immersed into music started with our previous generations listening to the Beatles. And yeah, exactly. Abbey Road definitely played like that bridge into um, that kind of immersion of music into the daily lives of people. Yeah. And like like you said, like the whole, they didn't write the name on the band, uh, on the cover because they were the most famous band. So it doesn't, they really, no one needed to know like that was a Beatles. Like, I knew it was the Beatles. Um, also, the photographer who was taking that picture apparently only got six clicks. Like, he was only out of, like, six pictures. And then uh, the Beatles and mostly Paul McCartney was the one who decided to, who chose between the six pictures. Um, and then when you look at the picture itself, you see, um, uh, you see John Lennon, the first guy. And then uh, after John Lennon, uh, you see uh, Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison in that order uh, from left to right. But when you look at um, Paul McCartney's feet, you see that he's the only one that doesn't have any shoes, like when you look closely. Uh, Mother, why do you think he was the only one that didn't have any shoes? You know, I've actually never looked at the album cover that closely so i didn't even realize he wasn't wearing shoes until you noticed um yeah so that's like, really really I interesting have no clue why i have no clue why he has no shoes like i looked at it too and i was like wait what wait, where did the shoes go like that was really my first thought i was like i have no clue where the shoes are so yeah i find it too like it's pretty interesting i don't know if there's a story behind it if there's something like people um if people know why, but like I have no clue. I just know like that's when that happened. Uh, and I mean, going going back to the album again, like Beatles. I feel like I feel like you like you said they were the uh, they were the beginning of actual like you like a, a lot of people didn't like follow bands back in the day. Like it wasn't like something that you follow religiously but the Beatles after they became so famous people started religiously following bands like I know 
uh, there's a time like not 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 uh, after the 60s and 70s in India like you know, I'm pretty sure this is in other countries as well but there's this obsession be- between the like, younger generation people to create their own bands <laughs> like I know like uh, even when I moved to when I moved to Cupertino uh, Aryan Kashyap one of my good friends he was actually one of the first people to get me into the Beatles a big fan of the Beatles he always called himself Paul McCartney yeah, he thought he was a charming one. So we always let him have that. Him, Sai, uh, they used to always talk about making a band. So I feel like just for the younger generation who came up and who I, I uh, who like, who looked at the Beatles in a different way, it almost seems like, it seems like a, it seems like a f- cool thing to do nowadays to have a band with your friends. But it all started out with the Beatles, which makes it like, which makes it so so much more like interesting about their legacy that uh, like their the legacy of it being oh here are these four friends doing it together and now more and more people want to create their own bands uh, so yeah and now uh, what do you think all of about some of the like other elements that they had into their like music like I know the Beatles are known for putting Indian music into some of their songs like that was something that they openly did. So what do you, you, throughout Abbey Road, what do you think about some of the different things that they did, like the experimentation in the album? I feel like at this point in their career, you know, for people who are listening to them back then, obviously they got used to the type of music that the Beatles were putting out. But for us, who are listening way, you know, half a century after its release, it's definitely something very, very different, you know. Um, I think the biggest difference in general is that their music is natural. Nowadays, we have like synthesizers and stuff like that to just make music that much easier to produce. But the fact that they actually hardcore played out their instruments like the bass, the guitar, the drums, everything was played out by them and you know that just gives a completely different feel to the music than using a synthesizer or something artificial to make the instrumentation and I feel like uh, that's something that I really really found interesting and what I found even more interesting is that you know they don't have every single instrument playing every single song uh, right, some right. some songs they'll have the bass guitarist play all of the guitar, which I found really really yeah. cool because you don't it's not really interpreted it's not that common. To do that. Yeah, exactly. Usually yeah. people will say like yeah. a bass guitar is a support guitar, right? But here you have the bass guitarist being the lead guitarist right, right, in yeah. a lot of songs. Exactly. So that's really really cool. Yeah. So experimentation was always there. Uh, and also, like, going back to the album, like like I said, there's not only love songs. Like, I feel a lot of people confuse the Beatles to just be like, oh, there's a bunch of love songs. Here you go. Just put it on. Love songs, love songs, love songs. So the fact that they had these different songs uh, on there, like, I mean, I feel like right now when you have a band, uh, it's almost like, I, I don't know if it's stereotypical if you, if you want to, like, chip in here. Like, I feel like sometimes it just feels like, uh, like it is normal to have like songs about daily life if you're like a band like you're making a song about like stuff that's happening in your daily life like she came into the bathroom window Paulistan Pam you never give me your money um uh, like these like uh, even Maxwell Silverhammer like these are stuff that I don't think I think a lot of people do nowadays more commonly where they talk about their regular daily routine like it's not just love songs so do you think it's like like why do you think people do that? like I don't I I I mean for someone who only who listens to a lot of hip hop with like a message behind it do you do you think this is something the bands do just to like make themselves more like I guess more comfortable with their listeners like how does that work? I feel like the thing with bands obviously we've seen a lot of different types of bands throughout the years because I don't think you can really compare something like the Beatles to a band like One Direction because One Direction's like all singers but here we have yeah. instrument 
instrumentalist and a singer. Um, but I think one thing in general that you have said was that a lot of bands, I would definitely agree that most bands do have like at least a good handful of songs where they talk about just their regular lives and their daily routines. And I feel that's because when it comes to like solo stars, you know, uh, it's much easier for them to put out much uh, work um, more frequently than it is for a band. And I feel through that people who are actually fans of them are more easily able to interact with their work. But when it comes to bands, you know, each person is different. And so yeah. by doing this like routine type of thing, uh, that's kind of their way of interacting with the fans in any way possible. Because again, planning a tour for a band is hard because yeah, multiple people, sure. different schedules, solo tour, exactly. easier. So I feel like that's why a lot of bands have those like, you know, this is what we do today. I woke up, I brushed, I took a shower, those type of songs. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, for sure. And also, I mean, it just adds like that childish element to, to a, like a band, like an album. Like it made me feel more connected to the Beatles. And, and no matter what, they do such a good thing about just connecting their audience with it. So I can't complain. Uh, and the fact that Abbey Road ended up being their last album, like together with those four, like from from 1960 to 1970, them being like the major superstars of the music industry for that 10 year span. Honestly, no one came close to the Beatles. So I feel like Abbey Road was a perfect send off for the Beatles. And the song that remains popular from that album till this day is Here Comes the Sun. And honestly, it's my favorite song from the album. It's so good. It like, it honestly has the capacity to make you feel happy, but at the same time, it can bring tears to your eyes. Like that's how diverse and that's how like strong, I guess the song is. So uh, here we have it. It's Like is isn't that song like really peaceful? Like I just think that's the song that I that that's like super peaceful and super like calming almost. So that's probably that's one of, one of the reasons why I feel like I really like the song. Uh, and now I have a question for you. The sixth song in the album, "I Want You," and in brackets, "She's So Heavy." Is that a joke? I don't understand. Like, is it is are they talking about the girl? I want the girl, but she's so heavy. Is this talking about someone else? Like, what is happening there, Maldiv? I feel like, I feel like that's a questionable title. And I mean, in this day and age, I don't think that would be something that would pass or like people would be accepting. Yeah, I definitely don't think uh, that type of language would be allowed today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think, uh, I think the reason they kept that she's so heavy is because of the the way the song is made you know it's probably one of the heaviest songs in the Beatles uh, like uh, catalog like it's probably the closest song they have to actual like blues type of music and okay. uh, I think it's mainly because you see a lot lot more instrumentation in this song without actual singing probably why they named it she's so heavy i don't know why she said she, why they said she but it's definitely like a heavier song when it comes in terms of instrumentation so that's one possible uh, reason that's cool i i think we're learning something new here i mean i feel like she because from my extensive spanish knowledge it's La Cancion, so maybe a song is she, so that's why they named it. See, we learned something new here. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I did not know that, so that was definitely something different, I guess. Uh, 
And I know, I know, like, Madhav, you recently got your driving license. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's been a hell of a time for uh, the whole squad with everyone finally getting their driving license, uh, me included. So, Madhav, when you did go drive this last week or so, did you listen to the Beatles? I did. Uh, no oh, preparation, yeah. preparation for the pod. Got to listen to music. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. How was? Did you listen to it with your dad? Like, did you guys bond over it? Was there any conversation uh, about that? Yeah. So, you know, I like listening to music while driving. I feel like that's something our generation, you know, really For likes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, our parents not so much. My my dad yeah, always exactly. hates it when I turn on like the radio or anything. So, you know, I put on some Beatles and he's like, oh, you're listening to good classics. Very nice. Very nice. So, you know, <laughs> I have now found out what type of music to play in the car when he's around. Yeah. So, uh, get some. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I feel like sometimes my mom gets kind of mad because like, I feel like nowadays music has a lot of bass and my mom doesn't like bass yeah. and I love bass. So I guess it doesn't go well in the car. But when it comes to Beatles, it's I think a good conversation starter because even even though the Beatles ended in the 70s, I think the impact was still there throughout the 70s and the 80s. So I definitely talked to my parents about it. So yeah, this is like, some, I feel like the Beatles and just doing this podcast is just helping us connect with stuff that you probably wouldn't have connected with in the past. Um, I just want to listen to one last song from the album, uh, Carry That Weight. I feel like this is the last, like, like it was like a last hurrah from the whole album. I know, I think in 1970, they came out with Hey Jude, which was probably one of their most famous songs. And everyone knows about it. Like, I mean, if you don't, I don't know what you're doing. But I think everyone knows about Hey Jude. But Carry That Weight was probably the last hurrah from this album, and which was also their last album. So here's Carry That Weight. So, I guess that covers it. Uh, I definitely want to, like, what, what, what do you think your final thoughts are about the album? No, um, if there was a Hall of Fame for music, this album would be in the Hall of Fame. First ballot, Absolutely. no question. Yeah, first ballot. And I feel like uh, it's uh, definitely the album that, uh, I guess you could say, made the most impact after it got released like this one and i know there are other albums like uh sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club and even uh rubber soul which i think this is rubber soul is definitely an album that we're going to cover in the future that's one of the best albums in my opinion nowhere man i mean i i relate to that song so that's definitely a really good album but like you said like you summed it up perfectly if there's a hall of fame of all albums all Beatles albums or whatever. I think every single Beatles album will make it to the Hall of Fame, but Abbey Road will probably be the first one, like first ballad all day, every day. Um, I, I know uh, for a fact that uh, the producer, George Mar- Martin, is called the fifth Beatle. He's an honorary fifth Beatle. So like like you mentioned in earlier, his, you love the production on the album. So you, I feel like, I feel like we, um, I did as well. So ever, I think it really stood out to us, like George Martin's production, and that's definitely something that I guess a lot of producers now should look at, like how he was so innovative in his time, and now, now nowadays producers are doing their own things, and I guess they're getting, a, they're looking at uh, George Martin and getting a piece out of his book. Uh, so yeah, and with that, I feel like. That concludes our Abbey Road podcast. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about something else before we go. Uh, recently, I got into the Premier League. As Malov knows, we talked about this in the last podcast. Big Tottenham Hotspur fan. Man, my, my, my God, dude. I'm telling you, this is our year with Tottenham. Uh, and also the Beatles being from Liverpool, England. Uh, Definitely after listening to this podcast, I mean, listening to this album, my bad. We were making the podcast, so I can't listen to it. But listening to the album and watching a lot of soccer, 
I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I feel like I I would like to go to England or just or live there for some time. Like I feel like that's definitely something that I want to do. Mohammed, do you feel the same way? Has it, have you ever thought about like apart from the Bay Area? Is there any other place that you would want to live in? Yeah, definitely. I think like a long time dream of mine has been to like spend some time in Europe, mainly like London, Paris, and Switzerland. Yeah. Those right. are like the places that I've wanted to visit for a really long time. So, you know, having some information on the Beatles would definitely yeah, help. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then now I, I know for a fact, like, football, American football, getting introduced to uh, England, and so is, um, I mean, cricket's a big thing there already. Basketball is also getting introduced. Soccer, and now I'm a big Tottenham fan, so soccer's there as well. So I mean, there's everything there, like, and I feel like, uh, I feel like I would love to go to Europe, but the, in my opinion, for someone who lives in America, um, I feel like most countries in Europe, uh, like Germany, Spain, uh, France, you need to know the language to like connect a bit more. So that's why, for someone who's mostly like, mostly speaking English in his, uh in his or her free time, I feel like England's something that I would really, I really think I would connect with. And honestly, even if it's just for a week, I would love to go to England. So yeah, that was my uh, speech. So if any traveling company is seeing this, and if you want to give us free tickets, I will gladly take them. So yeah, so that's our podcast on the Beatles, Abbey Road. I hope you guys liked it. I know, uh, I know you guys missed Manish. We all did. But I hope Madhav and I did a great job. I know Madhav came with some really nice uh, anecdotes and really nice stories and stuff about the songs, which I had no clue about. So thank you, Madhav. Um, and yeah, so that's our podcast. We are going to be doing another rapid react. I think before this podcast come out, when it comes out, we'll do a rapid react on Big Sean's album. And then we have some other classics in mind. Uh, Till Kendrick Lamar, Drake, J. Cole, I have an open invitation for you guys. Please drop an album. Like, what are you guys doing? Just drop so we can, we'll cover you guys. But till then, I have we have a lot of classics in mind. I know there are a lot of albums that we would like, we're looking forward to. Maldiv just suggested a great album on the group chat right now. That's going to be something that we look into. So yeah, the next three, four weeks are looking really nice, really smooth. We're going to have a bunch of rapid reacts as well. So, yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that. Mother, do you want to say anything before we wrap up the podcast? Uh, nothing much, you know. Uh, I feel like today is us opening the doors to a new version of Just Earworms where we have started to take on different genres of music. So I'm really excited for it. Exactly. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Like, honestly, like, the Beatles is really fun. And I know a lot of people probably haven't listened to the album or don't know as much about the Beatles. So definitely listen to the podcast. But before you listen to the podcast, or actually, this is the end of the podcast. So if you're all the way here, definitely go back and listen to some of the Beatles and even watch, watch a bunch, there are a bunch of YouTube videos about them. Go watch them. They're the OG superstars and they definitely deserve a lot of love uh and yeah so with that um uh, we'll take your leave uh please like and subscribe so that's something that will help our channel keep growing uh check us out on instagram as well just earworms uh instagram is somewhere we're putting a rapid reacts and making sure that a lot more people can a lot more people can like watch through instagram as well so that's something uh, that's an avenue that we're looking into so definitely be on the lookout for that and I hope you had a great time. And until next time on Just Earworms.